gonna do a quick review of the external anatomy or the body parts on the outside of a salmon. We've got the eye and mouth right here, the dorsal fin on the back, the adipose fin, sort of the speedometer. This is the caudal or tail fin. Here's our anal fin. This is one of the two pelvic fins, and this is one of the two pectoral or shoulder fins. Are you ready to look at the guts? This is the best part. This great puzzle was made for us by a person who lives in Alaska. So he knows his fish really well. So now we're getting a look at the inside of a fish, the internal anatomy or body parts. Now I want you to take a deep breath. Where's that air going? It's going inside your lungs. Do fish have lungs? Some of them do, sort of, but most fish don't, and salmon certainly don't have a lung. What they have is something red that you can see underneath a plate that covers part of their face. That plate that covers that red stuff, here's our red stuff, these are the gills. So when you're breathing in air, a salmon breathes in water, your lungs take the oxygen out of the air, and for the salmon, its gills take the oxygen out of the water. So there's the gills. Now I want you to make a fist. I want you to put that fist right in the middle of your chest. You know how they say when you're doing this, the Pledge of Allegiance, you put your hand over your heart, and so everybody thinks your heart is actually on the left side of your body? It's not, it's in the middle. So there's your heart. Your fist is about the same size as your heart. Now, your heart is also close to your lungs, and on a fish, the heart is close to the gills. Can you tell which part might be the heart? It's gonna be this one right here. Now, I want you to take your two fists and put them together. That's about the size of your brain. So, that's a pretty good brain. On a fish, I want you just to look at the thumb, the first part of your thumb, that is the size of a fish's brain, salmon brain. That would be right here, still up in the head, just like yours. And down your back, you have a spinal cord that's protected by all of those bones. And salmon also have a spinal cord and that is connected to your brain. Now, I want you to put your hand on your neck. Can you feel that ridgy thing right there? I want you to swallow. You feel how that swallow is going down that ridgy tube? There's a fancy word for this. It's called your esophagus. So your esophagus, when you swallow, it takes things down to what? What part of your body? I bet you thought your stomach. So your stomach is right in here. On a fish, here's the esophagus. It runs all the way down to this little round balloon looking thing. That's the stomach. That's a pretty small stomach, all things considered. Salmon have something extra that you don't. They've got all this stuff around the stomach and that's called the pyloric cica. That means fire sack. And inside that fire sack, they can super fast digest food. So when they get into a school of fish and they get lucky and they get a whole bunch to eat at one time, their stomach isn't enough for that, but that pyloric cica can really help move it along. So that's our supercharged stomach part. Now, I want you to uh, put your hand on your abdomen. That's the middle section of your body here. Your abdomen is full of something. What's it full of? It's full of guts. It's full of your intestine. You are an omnivore. You can eat everything. You can eat plants. You can eat animals. You can eat anything you want, pretty much. Uh, I mean, you have a really big intestine to help you do that. Salmon have a very simple intestine because they're mostly eating some pretty simple stuff. They eat bugs, and when they get bigger, they eat little fish. So here we've got one simple intestine. Now, I want you to take your two hands and I want you to put them over your rib cage. Can you feel those bones in there? You have bones, but they move. Take a deep breath. Feel those bones kind of moving along with everything else? The bones are there to help protect some really important organs. Your lungs and your heart are in there, but you also have something else. And it fits right at the bottom of your rib cage. It's a part of your body that helps to filter all of your blood. Do you know what it's called? That's your liver. 
So the liver is a very important organ and it's close to the heart and the lungs. So can you see it here where it belongs on the fish? Good. Now, I want you to start at your collarbone. That's this bone that runs right here at the base of your neck. And I want you to walk down the middle of your chest. Can you feel that hard bone right there? That's your sternum. I want you to go all the way down the sternum until you get to the bottom of the sternum where things start to feel uncomfortable when you push on them. That's because there's a little sharp spot at the end of your sternum. And underneath that, there's a little organ. It's smaller than your fist and it lives right under there where it's partly protected. And that's another really important organ. That's your spleen. Your spleen is what helps you get well when you get sick. It produces white blood cells that go out and battle the germs. On a fish, the spleen is right down here close to the stomach, just like yours is. Now, there's one more organ I wanna talk about. Take your two fists like this. Emily, you're gonna to have to turn around for this one. I want you to put your fist right in the small of your back. That's where your kidneys are located. So your kidneys help you with filtering also, but in this case, they're filtering liquids that aren't blood. So when you take a drink of water, that water is ultimately gonna go back through your kidneys before you get rid of it. And how do you get rid of it? You pee, right? Now, do you just pee all the time whenever you feel like it, or do you hold it? Most people hold it, right? Babies can't, but when you get older, you can hold it. And that's a bladder. It's a muscular sac that helps you hold your urine so that you can pee when you want to and not all the time. Fish don't need that. They're in the water. They can pee whenever they feel like it. So right down here is where that urine goes out. And right along here is their kidney. Now that's radically different from yours. If you've ever cut open a fish, you might see down the center of the fish, right next to its spine, a bunch of black stuff, and you scrape that out before you eat your fish. That's the kidneys, and they have giant kidneys because a fish always has to adjust how much salt is in its body. Can you drink salt water? I certainly hope not, because if you drink salt water, you can make yourself really sick, and you can even die from drinking too much salt water because your body can't get rid of all that extra salt. A fish has to, and salmon are especially amazing because they start their life in fresh water where they don't have enough salt, and then they go out to the ocean where they have way too much salt, and then they come back into the freshwater rivers where, again, they don't have enough salt. So they have to have big kidneys that help to balance the salts in their system, much bigger than yours. Now, are you looking at a boy fish or a girl fish here? How can you tell? Uh, if you're looking at the inside of a fish, it's a lot easier than the outside of a fish. And on the inside, can you see this thing right here? This is the egg sac. So that makes this a female, right? So females carry egg sacs. Males would carry a sac just like this, but it would look white and it'd be full of milt or sperm. Now a female salmon, like a Chinook salmon, she can have 4,000 eggs in her two sacs. That's pretty amazing. There's one more thing in here that we don't have in our body. You can only see part of it on our puzzle. It actually extends the whole length of the puzzle. Emily's a really good swimmer. She was a lifeguard uh, before she came here, and she doesn't need something like this. But fish really do. They need an inflatable sack inside their bodies. Now, when we're little, sometimes we put inflatable stuff on ourselves on the outside so we can float better in the water but a salmon has to have it on the inside. And this just means that a fish can rest in the water without sinking. It's a swim bladder, it's just full of air. So that's the internal anatomy of our fish.